Hey, what's up guys? John here. British Prime Minister Liz Truss resigns after disastrous economic plan. What they're saying is happening is something we have to pay very close attention to because I believe we connect the dots, we're gonna see something very clear. Look at Sri Lanka, look at Argentina, you look at Turkey, and you look at all the other countries. What's happening, they're all falling. They're all cracking beneath our feet. And I believe we're gonna be entering some unique times. Now they're pointing at the problems that were created apparently by Liz Trust. Now on this channel, I don't talk about, I don't talk about politics. I don't talk left or right. I keep it strictly money, finance, and business. And what her plan was, was really a business plan. And so they're saying that this was wrong and that what we need to do is we need to do something completely different. Now I'm gonna walk you through exactly what that looks like in this video. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube's gonna share this content to educate more people about what's really going on. Take a look at this. Trust departure follows a night of remarkable scenes in Parliament with lawmakers denouncing strong-arm tactics employed by government that allegedly brought some colleagues to tears and prompted growing demands for her to go from within her own party. She huddled inside number 10 Downing Street with Graham Brady, a senior conservative lawmaker who oversees leadership challenges. Brady is perhaps better placed than anyone to judge a leader's support from within the party. And by Thursday morning, the picture was clear. Trust 47 had prompted a radical shift in Britain's economic fortunes, turning it into a low tax, high growth country that would unleash its post-Brexit potential. In practice, Trustonomics was an utter failure and would become her political epitaph. Now, they're saying that this is a failure to have a low tax system and a high growth country. And what they're really saying is that they need to increase taxes to fund social programs to, you know, to combat inequality and to make things better for everybody, right? And so when people think of low tax, they think of, you know, the millionaire, the billionaire that is laughing at everyone else sitting on tops of, you know, fortunes of cash. But the reality is that person, they do exist, there's no doubt about it, but they're not putting themselves in a situation in which if they say taxes are going up or going down, it's going to cost them a single dollar. Here's what I mean. Look at a place like, look at a place like Ireland. They have Apple, they have Facebook and Microsoft, they have Starbucks, they have Nike, all these large corporations that do tons and tons of business in all over the world, right? And so what ultimately happens is they're paying their corporate tax rate. Right? For example, in America, in America, corporate tax rate, you know, might be 37%. If they were, if you just basically uh, started a business there and you're making over six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year. And so their corporate tax rate is uh, 12 and a half percent, right? 12 and a half percent, we'd have 37% federal over that. So you start to look at, yes, yeah, sure, they would get those tax breaks, but it doesn't just, they don't just pay taxes here. It starts to separate and the money goes a certain portion will go towards you know, distribution and infrastructure and everything else. And the rest of the money starts to go uh, into other locations. And, and what ultimately happens is they start to show very, very little profits, little taxable profits and massive gains for you know, the, the shareholders, massive gains for, uh, for the actual entities, but they're not paying massive taxes. That's just not how it works. And so when they're saying that when you have a low tax, high growth country, that would unleash, right? So they're basically saying they need to increase those taxes, but the only person paying those high taxes are gonna be the middle class. The money always gets taken from the middle class, never from the rich, never from the elite. That's why, we, for example, you look at Switzerland. 30% of the world's wealth is in Switzerland, 30%. Why? It's because they have privacy and security. They have, you know, they have many benefits of doing business and banking there versus a place like America or anywhere else, right? But mainly security. What's ultimately happening is we are going to witness this situation unfold. And they're gonna say, we need more taxes, we need to do something that's going to be better for everyone. But the reality is the only way that that's actually gonna work is if you know it's really true. Like they, they always say, eat the rich, and they always say all these different things, but no one's ever eaten the rich. That's just the point blank, they're not doing it. For example, look at John Paulson. This is a really good example. John Paulson, he's a, a multi-billionaire, maybe billions and billions of dollars in uh, 2007, 2008, betting against the mortgage market, right? They claim his net worth is somewhere around $4.8 billion. $4.8 billion. He's getting divorced right now from his uh, ex-wife. She wants $2.4 billion of his 4.8. So she wants half of his net worth. He says, I don't have that money. You know, it's, it's held by a trust. I don't own the money. And so 
what ultimately happens is he would send a demand to the trust and say, okay, pay $2.4 billion to uh, my ex-wife. And the, the trust would say, okay, is this a demand from the court? Are you under duress? Are you? And if he says yes, it's demanded from the court, they will throw it away. She won't get anything. That's what's ultimately happening. So they throw it away and then he ends up remaining in full control of that money, right? And so when we look at what's actually happening, I mean, these offshore trusts are so easy to set up. You simply could hire an attorney, it might cost you 30 grand and an annual fee of about $8,000. And then ultimately you could set it up in maybe Cook Islands or Nevis. And then you can have bank accounts in different locations all over the world. And you can literally just set up your bank account owned by that offshore trust. And if they ever get sued, I mean, it's, it's very fascinating. I've done a lot of research in this. If they ever get sued, they would literally have to bring their entire lawsuit to the Cook Islands or the entire lawsuit to Nevis. And they would then have to prove within a reasonable doubt. So basically there's no way it could be wrong. They'd have to win that case there. And all the while that case is actually unfolding, what they could then do is they could relocate the money and the trust during the actual case. And so they have to jump from one jurisdiction and country to another chasing that money. It's just got long gone, right? So when they say we need to, uh, you know, this is a bad situation, a low tax plan is bad. A low tax plan does a couple things. One, it brings in more jobs, more opportunity. It brings, you know, more potential for the actual location. When you have high taxes, you're just pushing more and more and more people to hide money and to, uh, and to be in a very, very defensive place, especially in an inflationary environment where energy bills are through the roof, cost of living is through the roof. This is all a really bad thing for the everyday middle class. Now, if you were to put on top of that more and more and more taxes, it would be a recipe for disaster. Now, am I saying that you know, any, there is any easy solution? No. You know, there's definitely not. There's actually really no solution that's going to be pleasant. The solution would be so dramatic that people I think couldn't understand because we're in this very low, we were in this very low interest rate, heavy stimulated economy. When that money is pulled out and interest rates are rising and everything else is going up and we're seeing over half of all employers getting ready for job cuts, we're gonna start to see a massive demand on social services, no doubt about it, a massive demand. But if all the money is in offshore trust and uh, tucked away in different locations and hidden, then where's the money coming from? It's not gonna come from the rich. I can almost promise you, it's not gonna come from the rich. The rich, they have teams of attorneys and accountants and they've been planning and preparing for this for many years. You know, they, they plan not for this type of economic situation, but for all situations because they're rich for a reason because they generally, they foresee problems, right? That's why they're rich. They foresee problems, they put themselves in a position to make sure they're never going to have all their eggs in one basket. Granted, one crazy situation happens or one law or policy happens, do you think they're gonna to wanna to jeopardize their entire net worth and their entire company? No. And that's why they start to hedge their risk and they start to keep money in certain areas. Look at Bermuda, for example. Bermuda, where uh, John Paulson, uh, he apparently was moving money. A lot of people, you can register airplanes and private jets in Bermuda for zero tax. I and mean, there's, there's all these different tax loopholes for people that have wealth and money that they're going to exercise. There's just no doubt about it. So when they say Liz Truss in this situation is an absolute tragedy, uh, what she did was horrible. Just imagine, just imagine when they really start to increase taxes, everybody, Everyone is going to start diving into offshore trust. Everyone's going to start hiding every single thing that they possibly can. And the last thing they're going to want to do is want to you know, expose themselves to any radical policy change that could dramatically decrease their net worth and put themselves in a vulnerable situation. What do you think about this? Drop it below. Let's have a conversation. If you want to fix your credit, if you have high interest credit card debt, you feel kind of trapped, go to cashnow.video. Call us at 561-430-5900. What's ultimately gonna happen is we are gonna start to see all over the world banks tightening up. It's gonna get much harder to get out of debt. It's gonna get much harder to get access to money if you don't have an incredible credit score. I personally believe the minimum is gonna be 750 to 770 is what you're gonna to need to get access to money. And when the economy does go through a change, you're gonna want access to money. You're gonna to wanna to buy real estate. You're gonna to wanna to invest. You're gonna to wanna to make moves. 
you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you're looking at all these great deals going by and you can't buy any of them because you can't get access to money. So give us a call at 561-430-5900 or go to cashnow.video. We would love to help you. Subscribe here and on my second channel on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok up in the banner. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.